Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Back again, we're talking about tackle, the ultimate salt strong tackle index here's how this whole thing came about i got luke got justin on here we were talking about creating essentially a list we came from the financial services industry they had indexes right everyone's heard of the s p 500 index and the dow jones index and there's fifty thousand different types of indexes now and they're great because it's a it's a list of you know top companies based on market cap or whatever it might be and one of the top questions we get from, especially from new insider members, you know, they've been watching us. Maybe you're one of them. You've been watching us on YouTube, or you know, maybe you're uh, a new member, maybe a member of a couple years, and you know, you're about to go spend some decent money on on tackle, which we all love doing. And you're like, oh man, like, what did they say again in that one video? Because we put so much content out. Like, all right, if you guys could just make a list uh, and just pick one of everything, like one rod. One reel, one top water lure, one soft plastic, you know, paddle tail, one soft plastic jerk shad, like all the way down to even like live bait hooks, just like w- your your top pick. Doesn't mean that's all we fish with. And that doesn't mean that's all you should buy. But if you could only afford one of every t- category, essentially, what would it be? And so we spent a lot of time. We had Wyatt and Tony and a few others, and even some of our, our fishing guides uh, got a little bit involved in this just kind of picking the brains of people. And we finally boiled it down. And I will say before we reveal this list, this index, if you will, that it will change. Like already we're working on some custom rods uh, that that will probably trump one of the rods that we have in here or the rod that we have in here. Uh, we've been working on a new topwater lure. Some of you guys have already seen it or heard about it called the Moonwalker. Uh, we've got a, another rendition of of some shrimp coming. I mean, so all of these new things will probably change it, which is cool. So we'll keep this post on saltstrom.com and we'll continually update it as things change, just like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, where they take out companies that aren't making the cut anymore and they bring a new one in and replace it. So this is really 1.0 of this salt strong ultimate tackle index so justin and luke welcome to the show are you guys ready to do this it's gonna be fun let's go man yeah and, and the and the key is less is more as you'll see i mean that's that's one thing i've learned uh, i learned the hard way specialist I, yeah. simplicity specialist there it is joe, yeah. joe has the theme still but but it, it's so true and and it's it'll help save so much money i I literally have a, a spare bedroom that's just full of tackle. And it's because I was going out buying every single look, color of every single possible thing that I might possibly need. And, I, and looking back at like what I actually use, it's like seven lures, right? And we'll, and we'll, so we'll talk about the tackle. Just know this is specific for inshore saltwater fishing. So yes. going after sea trout, snook, redfish, flounder, in the inshore waterways, that is specifically what we're talking about. And uh, it, it will very likely save you a bunch of money. Yep. So this is for inshore slams, just so people don't get their their waders in a wad here. This is not for surf fishing. You know, this this is not for, you know, fishing off of a jetty. This is, you know, kayak, wade fishing, boat, skiff for redfish, speckled trout, snook, and flounder. Really those species. And obviously mangrove snapper and the other fish that we catch along with it. But this is, this is very specific. So if you like this at the end, let us know if you want us to do one of these for, for surf fishing and, you know, beach fishing and pier fishing and even near shore fishing, right? Cause obviously what we're about to recommend is not going to be the best for going after grouper or red snapper right now in the, in the Gulf. So let's kick it off with the rod. This was a tough one. Um, Luke, you want to, cause I think you probably had the most leeway or leverage on this one. Um, what rod did we pick is the one, if we could only pick one that you wanted to buy today. Yeah. I mean, this one to me, it's, uh, it, it was there. It, it helped have my coolest catch I'll ever have in my life. And that was the balcony snook catch where we're on the, the third floor of a balcony and, and there was a snook that we could see near the shoreline. It was going to be a long cast. I had to like basically thread it between two palm trees and then go down to, you know, three, three stories 
And that rod with a little small jerk bait, it helped me deliver a long cast, but long and accurate cast. So it's a seven foot six TFO professional rod. It's like a, around a hundred dollars. And now that the seven six, it used to be 99, they bumped it to 109, but affordable rod that is, is actually really good. I've tested out a ton of rods over the years. I have found some that are better just to be transparent, um, but not near that price point. And so in many cases it competes with rods that are two or three times more expensive. Um, so as far as if I can only do, if I can only recommend one rod to help you save money and, and catch a bunch of fish, it would be that TFO Pro. And so we'll put links down below. But in this case, the, their medium uh, feels more like a medium heavy and, and many other um, many other brands like St. Croix, for instance, um, and, or even uh, like the, the, the E6X if you're a D Lumos fan. So, so just know that medium is it. I wouldn't go medium heavy. It's a little bit too bulky for a lot of like the smaller um, paddle tails and medium light. You're going to start losing your power to get hook sets with weed the soft plastic. So medium is like the all purpose, at least for me, for what I've seen, it's like the all purpose rod for, for inshore fishing, whether using lures and light bait. It's been, it's been solid. I wrote down the value and the, the tackle value index is what I wrote down. We should have said that we've been talking about this since February. Like we had full on meetings since February discussing this. And so, you know, a lot of us went, well, man, what if like money was not an issue and we let that index would look a little bit different. Right. So this is just the overall value. So whether you're new, you're weekend warrior or you're established and, you know, fish in tournaments, uh, we still think all this stuff are pro. This is what we're spending our, a lot of our own money on. So TFO, the pro series for the rod, the real, this might not shock you guys because we love it. We talk about it over and over and we're not sponsored by any of these groups, by the way, we don't have z we zero sponsorship. Some have offered, we've declined every single one because we want to be unbiased. We want to be the consumer reports out there. So the real Justin, what do we got? Hands down, best bang for buck uh, would be the Dial Fuego 2500 DXH model. It even sounds fancy to say. Mm. Uh, that 2500 model, and anytime you see that XH at the end of a, of a Dial reel, means it's the faster gear ratio. So it's the 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. It just allows you more opportunities uh, in your presentations on the water than a, the 5.2 or, or slower gear ratio. So we found that in terms of weight, overall weight of the reel, gear ratio of the reel, drag capacity. I think what, Luke, that's 20, 22 pounds of drag. 20 or 22, which is crazy. Wow. And it's like 7.2 ounces, something just silly light and, yep. uh, and smooth. So it's, it's so shocking that they're only selling it for $99. For sure. And I think the biggest kicker on that reel, you know, when the Fuego, when this iteration of Fuego, the Fuego LTs came out, the biggest thing on that reel is that Daiwa does incorporate mag seal on a Fuego, on a $100 reel. Now, mag seal is normally put into, you know, their $200 ish products and higher. I mean, they have it in their $800 exist. It's in all of their heavier, beefier offshore setups like the Saltigas and the Saltist. So to incorporate mag seal, which is which is a unique thing to Daiwa into a hundred dollar reel, um, from a sealing and like long term smoothness standpoint, I think is awesome. Like that's that's money well spent uh, when you go that route. So I think that was you know universally agree that bang for buck for a hundred bucks, like that's really hard to top. Yeah, and, and I think the bigger question that we debated was all right, was it the twenty five hundred or the three thousand? I think we all agreed the twenty five hundred does everything you need. Uh, you know, a little bit lighter as well. And I mean, Luke, you've caught tarpon on it. We've caught big monster bull redfish and, and snook. It just, it does everything and such a good deal. And of course, all this stuff, if you're an insider member, you know, you get nice discounts on it as, a, as well as part of being in the club. And uh, to me, the, those two combined, just a no brainer. They're well balanced. It's a, an absolute no brainer. Like I said, could change by the end of the year if these could both be different. But for right now, bang for the buck, this is what we're going with. Yeah, just just to make sure everybody knows that we're not this is not a sponsored ad or whatever. Let's let's make sure to say cons about everything too, because there's no situation where there's something that's perfect. So um so for the real, since we're on that, the con is that the this right here, so it, the reason why it's so light is it's not made of metal, it's made of some carbon or something. Justin, you probably you know the spec better than I do. It's but, a, yeah, it's a carbon composite, like a lower density yeah. carbon. 
so, but it's not. So I'm looking at the arm that actually connects the reel to the to the rod itself. So this is not made of metal. It's not aluminum. So it it is prone when you hook a big fish, and if you have your drag, if you're using a really strong line, you have your drag tied. This reel, like the whole thing, can flex. So it just feels a little bit weird. That's the that's the con that we've heard from from uh, from members who have gotten it. But in most cases, they're using 20 pound line or more, and they have their drag set pretty tight. So that, uh, when we get the line part, we're going to explain why that why you don't want why you don't need that line. Uh, so if you're using 10 pound line, like re recommend instead of the proper drag setting. It's really not an issue, but just know that this is not the reel to go out and and go after big fish around jetties and stuff with high drag. Correct. Well, what it is, does have the what capability. Yeah, although it does have the capability of, of 20 plus pounds of drag and it's smooth, um, it, it's just not designed for that. This is a finesse type reel. And as for the rod, just to go back to that rod. So the issue with that is that it does have a really short butt. So the butt from where that where that rod seat goes out. Is like I believe it's ten and a quarter inches, which is shorter, you know, a lot shorter than most others. Um, I I think that's a pro because it has more distance on a seven foot six rod. More of that rod is used for casting distance, but uh, some people like to have the rod like when you're holding the rod to have it go all the way down to like your elbow when you're fighting the fish. And just know that rod will not go down the elbow; it goes down to right about you know um, I guess probably two or three inches short of the elbow. And the rod guides themselves. Um, you know, it, it's after years of abuse, some of my guide, little guide inserts started falling out. But again, that took multiple years of abuse and, uh, and they're, they're very inexpensive to fix. So just want to make sure that we throw all the, the cons in there as well. Cool. Yeah. Luke, you've always been a short butt guy ever since high school. Short butt guy, <laughs> Luke. Uh, so segue to line. If you're going to pick one and this, we went back and forth on this too. Cause some of us love the Daiwa J braid. But Power Pro won as a team. We all agreed. Power Pro, 10 pounds, 150 yards. You know, you could buy 300, uh, bulk up and save some money and and uh, and buy it in, uh, in bigger spools. But dark green seemed to be consensus. I, I I don't know. I didn't know how far down that rabbit hole we were going to go. But in general, in terms of a brand, Power Pro, 10 pound on the same setup. I don't think we want to spend too much time on that one since we have quite a few things to get through. The the rod and the reel are probably the two most important and really the most expensive. Um, leader material. Oh, this was a tough one. This one hurt. I mean, and, and, and once again, this was off value. This doesn't mean we don't use other things about uh, besides what we're about to recommend. You know, why it even said, you know, and we're, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about mono versus fluoro. And and on the value side of things, I think it's pretty easy to say mono wins. You know, Wyatt's point was if I'm in a tournament that it's just like I want every slight edge, even if I don't know if it's true or not, I'm going to go with fluoro just because it might help me, kind of like the placebo effect. So, uh, Luke, what was the winner here on the leader material? Yeah, it was the Andy. The Andy, just regular mono. It comes in little, I don't have one handy here, but it comes in just the easy to, to pack schools where you can have multiple sizes in your tackle bag. The 20, uh, it was really the all-purpose. Yeah, they're Justin's holding it. So it's a nice, it's called a wrist school. Um, that wrist school has over 50 yards of line or has 50 yards of line and it's like $5. And then you compare that to Floro um, for 25 yards. So for half the yardage, you're spending three times more. Plus or minus. So like the cost per yard is not even close in performance. I, I honestly can, cannot find a difference in the actual performance for a couple of years. I would do go back and forth on trips and, uh, and can't really tell even do an abrasion test. The regular mono actually wins the abrasion test when rubbing against sandpaper, even when controlling the diameter of the line, which blew me away. I always thought that flora was better, but it turns out it's a little bit more brittle. Um, but, but again, the science is that, supposedly it's it's less visible in the water the fluorocarbon is less visible in the water that test i'm, I'm setting up the assembly still but uh, that'll be coming up soon yeah and it, I, i'll, I'll yeah, go for it justin say, i'm i'm behind that like coming in just like you guys haven't been a big fluorocarbon guy and like ready to beat my chest take fluorocarbon to the grave this is in my my milk crate every time i'm out on the kayak and i'm fishing and this is what i've gotten most of my fish on over the past couple months and from a performance standpoint i like it's a little bit softer I guess, than fluorocarbon. So it does tie knots a little easier, might help with lure performance, but good value, bang for buck. I haven't seen any, haven't had any fish turn away from it yet. Uh, and I've been using it for a couple months. So really happy with it. 
Yeah, that's take, a contentious one. There's a lot of people that go both ways. But so far, again, honestly, like so far, if, if I'm talking to a family member and say, hey, just go ahead and get that Andy. You know, you don't need to. You don't need to spend to get the money. The floor is not bad. It's just just not need to spend that much money. Yeah. Right. All right. So once again, Luke, like short butts, he does not go both ways. But if you do. <laughs> We also have a leader category for Floro. And we said for best value, Berkeley Vanish, probably the best value. Uh, you can buy them in slightly bigger spools, right? Uh, I don't even know what sizes they have in both, you know, yeah. 20, 25, 30, but something like that. And they go, yeah. I mean, they have bigger, like 100 yard spools, but for value, like a 25, 30 yard spool is is plenty i mean when you when you measure out your leader lengths of you know 16 18 inches or so you know when you're going out and fishing the flats that'll last you quite a while um and i think the biggest reason for the vanish being the value fluorocarbon is really that abrasion resistance um you look you've done a lot of tests comparing a couple different manufacturers of fluorocarbon and you found that uh for not strength and for abrasion resistant that of all the fluorocarbons that 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 ended up being a high contender Right. Yeah. Well, Seaguar. So I did tests on Seaguar in the Berkeley Vanish, and so um, Seaguar actually the blue, blue label. That's probably the most popular one from Seaguar. The the blue label. I was doing twenty pounds each. The blue label had a slightly stronger knot strength, but the the uh, Vanish had a better job with abrasion. And so for me, as a snook, I, I love catching snook, and usually. It's rare that a fish is pulling off by tension. It's almost always abrasion, right? If you're drag set properly, you won't lose a hook based on a fish based on on tension. Um, so the abrasion is, in my opinion, is the more important factor. And it so happens the Berkeley Vanish happens to not cost as much. Um, and you can actually get instead of the 25 yard spools, I measured a 200 yard spool, and I, I did the not strength and abrasion. I couldn't tell a difference. So you can get a 200 yard spool of Berkeley Vanish at a cost basis that's it's still more than mono but it's it's actually pretty close um it's way less than the small wrist pools of cigar blue label mm -hmm. cool all right moving on to soft plastic paddle tails it is probably no surprise that we are going to say slam shady the big question this is the biggest debate amongst our team and even some of our audience members is is it the 2.0 slam shady or is it the Z-Man Slim Shady? We've all caught a ton of fish off both. They're both phenomenal. You should have both. But if you go fish with Luke, myself, Tony, Wyatt, Justin, I mean, usually our confidence bait, the one that we're starting with is the 2.0. And I think especially because I know a lot of people who are maybe, maybe beginners or maybe just they're beginning to use artificial lures. Tons of anglers, especially here in Florida, like we were, I mean, we were live bait dudes forever. That's all we fish with. And the worst thing you could do is when you go from live bait to lures is get something that's really tough to rig. And that's the only downside to Z-Man. The stuff lasts forever. It'll definitely last longer than 2.0. Although, you know, we have caught, you know, 15, 20 really nice trout in a, in a row on one little 2.0 lure. Uh, but the Z-Man is going to last longer. I mean, that's, that's definitely the, the pro of it. But the con is it's tougher to rig. It, it floats a little bit more. I love the action of the 2.0. The 2.0 is scented and it's 2.0 for a reason. One, it was the second rendition. Yeah, Justin's got one and it's two and one. It's one of the only lures uh, that, you know, that, that we confidently, when the, when the tail is bitten off and sometimes we'll even purposely rip off the paddle tail and turn it into essentially a little jerk shad. So it is two and one. We've caught some monster snook and redfish and even flounder uh, just using that little nub, if you will, on a, on an under twist lock hook. Uh, that thing works phenomenal in all water columns. Obviously, you're not going to fish it in 10 feet of water, but, you know, from super, super shallow to five feet, uh, it's unstoppable. It's my go-to. Once again, Luke, every the last couple of weeks, we've been fishing with some of our lifer members and they're all, you, you can see they're kind of looking like, all right, dude, where's your slam shanties? And guess what? Boom. We pop out the hunter pack every single time. Luke and I both have one on us at, at pretty much any given time. And so far, uh, I'll say about half start with something different. And by the end of the day, they're using it. They're switching back just because mm -hmm. it works. And, yep. and this isn't just like, there is actually a reason for it. So we'll just cover a little bit of it. So here's just a close up of it. The reason why most, a lot of paddle tails have a flat front, and that is going to significantly decrease the, the action in the water if rigged on a weighted hook. It's good for jig heads, but if you're going for the shallows with a weighted hook, 
it's going to look bad in the water. And so it has a, a torpedo head and then the body is nice and in a streamline so that without the tail, it now has a good jerky motion. It's just like a jerk shad, but, but a much smaller one. So like when the little fry baits around, just taking the tail, the tail off and using a little nub actually will catch the most fish and the biggest fish in many cases. So that's why this is so versatile. You can use it on jig heads, weighted hooks. You can go down to a l- really small profile when that small baits around, which right now as we're filming, there's a bunch of fry bait and, and the paddle tail trim down about it, take about an inch off. And that, that's actually going to get the most strikes in many cases. Pretty, pretty fly for a fry guy. Um, cool. Well, let's, let's move on the 2.0 by far that, that ended up just kind of being a no brainer on the soft plastic jerk bait. What do we got, Justin or Luke? When are you guys holding it up? The Alabama leprechaun. Show me the gold. I want to know where the gold's at. Yeah, and so I always thought this is a split tail jerk bait. This is what I go to. So the paddle tail is pretty much for all conditions. This is a niche need when you're out on the, one of those days where the water's clear, the winds are down, right? Calm and clear in shallow water. This is when this this really shines. So it's um, it's a jerk bait. So it's five inches in this case. Has a split tail. Put on a weighted hook. It absolutely crushes it. So I used to think that these were were like little tail things were bait imitators. Um, and they are, but looking at the underwater footage, when it's on a weighted hook and doing the, the double twitch retrieve, it looks sh- amazingly like a scared shrimp coming out of the grass. And when when big fish, I'm fishing areas with big redfish to get a lot of pressure, um, where like pretty much top waters will never work, most lures won't work, they just can't help but to hit it when they see something just darting out of the grass that looks like a shrimp, they'll go up and smack it. So. So this is shockingly good for those days when it's calm and clear. Yep. And that is infused with scent as well. A special scent that we uh, got the manufacturer to infuse in there. And uh, you're not going to smell like the 2.0. You can actually like feel it. It is, it is all over the place on that. This one is more baked and infused in and is uh, basically stays in, in a lot longer, a little bit different because you're not going to be able to feel it. Cause I know anglers like to feel stuff. Cause we hear that sometimes like, yeah, I don't, I don't smell the scent, but trust me, fish can smell better than dogs. Dogs smell better than us. They will smell that. And that thing is just continued to work. So I need a little help from you guys here. Who else in the leprechaun say, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. get me a backhoe, dig up that tree. <laughs> <laughs> I want the go. All right. Soft plastic shrimp. Oh man. I want to hit this one. Yep. 100% the uh the power prawn. Yes. This this was the coolest thing when I when I joined you guys uh earlier in the year and I've used a lot of different shrimp lures for tournament fishing and uh I I I think I've used just about everything and you guys designed this power prawn um to the T, Luke, like from the size, from the coloration, the profile itself, the the, the definition there in the tail which really just kind of helps it when you're presenting it in, in a slow manner, stays in the strike zone really well and undulates up and down really well. Even the custom jig heads that come with it, this is a winner. Um, whether you rig it on an owner twist lock or you rig it with the, the jig head or the weedless jig head, um, and to have, I think you can kind of hear that, a rattle port in there too, this mm-hmm. super smart um, and very, very durable. Like, again, I, I've said it, all the boxes are checked. I think that. Um, shrimp lures either come pre-rigged with a jig head, they come pre-rigged with a with a weedless hook that's really a lot of companies will make a shrimp lure to be designed to use a certain way. And this is so versatile. You know, you can rig it a couple different ways. You can throw it around docks, you can rig it weedless and work it over the grass when sight fishing, red fish and trout, which is my favorite thing to do. So I've spent a lot of time experimenting with this after you guys have come out with it. I've been I've been pretty happy with it. Um, putting it up side by side against stuff that's been out there you know 10 plus years this is not a one trick pony i think is the coolest thing about it yeah it's got a you know cool story from brazil and you know over there they have ribalo which is you know snook and it's like bass fishing here i mean big money tournaments they're in essentially bass boats with 300 horsepower engines are flying and it's super competitive and no one uses live bait like to them it's like unheard of it's just like the professional bass guys they're not using shiners they're using lures. And one thing that, you know, Marcos, who first introduced us to, to this shrimp, 
this uh, power prawn is he's like, I don't get it. He's like, why would anyone ever buy a pre-rigged shrimp? He's like, it's like a bass guy buying a pack of pre-rigged nine inch culprit worms. It's that's a horrible idea. Like, cause it, it eliminates uh, nine different other ways to rig that thing based on where you are. He's like, it's horrible. He's like, don't ever buy a pre-rigged shrimp. Nothing gets you manufacturers that make them. They, I'm sure they serve a purpose. I personally don't buy them. Uh, we love recommending buying, whether it's power prawn or not, find something that is not pre-rigged that you can rig yourself and put your own jig head or your own twist lock hook. I mean, there's so many times Luke, where we fish the docks with the power prawn because it's so durable. We take the jig head off and then we go fish the flats. And then we're putting, you know, a, a weedless hook on there. We're having the whole thing weedless. So I've got it so, so much more versatile. I think a good analogy to go with that. Kind of like uh, like on a camera, a pre-rigged swim bait or a pre-rigged lure. Think of it as like automatic on the camera. And when you take a soft plastic on rig, think of it as manual. Like the quality that you're going to get out of learning to finesse things that you can have the manual control over, the better your success is going to be. Um I think that's that's kind of all what I've always think. It's like an instrument. You get a lot more, a lot more nuances out of something that you you can rig yourself than something that you're kind of forced and locked into doing yeah. what it came with. And, d- and depth control is just crucial. Yes. So the, the 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 reason why to get separate, you know, the the non pre rigged right, is that you can you know the depth you're going to be fishing at the spot, and so now you can just put quickly put the right size jig head on or weighted hook, and now you're going to be fishing that that depth with the with the pre-rigged, if it's if it's running depth is three feet of water and you need five, you're not gonna catch you're not gonna catch nearly as many fish as it, as you would if you could just get a little more weight on there. So yep. super important. Power prong, get your power prongs. Top water, moving on top water. Now I think this one's gonna get knocked off at some point by the end of the year from the moonwalker. But for right now, still today, as we record this, the super spook junior in that bone color. It's worked forever. Luke and I did a podcast uh, here. We just recorded uh, about the snook, about the snook book. And I mean, he talks about the super spook in there. Uh, that thing just, it's worked for so long. Great, great top water and, uh, and works in, you know, a lot of different areas and in, uh, in a lot of different species too. So uh, anything to note on that? I would note to put in the single inline hooks on them. So they mm. come with double hooks, which I, I really can't stand, um, both for our safety, the fish's safety. If we're doing catch and release fishing, highly, highly recommend using inline hooks. Even if you're not doing catch and release fishing, the inline hooks, um, which I, I thought I had some here. Yeah. So here's some, um, they're basically the hooks that you can put on these top waters. I'm actually, in the, and, um, I, this is a, a new one down here. I'm putting them on, but it's in, replace your, your troubles with these inlines. And I have not seen a decrease in my overall strike to catch ratio, right? I, I, the only time I've seen where fish will strike and miss are when it's the smaller fish. Like I've had multiple times when lady fish are up there smacking it, smacking it, thankfully not getting hooked. And then a bigger fish will see the commotion and go up and steal that meal. I've got some of my bigger fish in that, in that situation. So I, I, I will hands down say that the inline hooks are, are an advantage. Um, for both catching and for personal safety. If you look at pretty much 90 plus percent of those pictures where you see people's, you know, hooks in their hands or in their heads or whatever, it's almost always a trouble hook, right? And so for for safety and for just catchability, these inline hooks are a big deal. Yes. All right. Moving on to suspending twitch, twitch bait. Suspending twitch bait. Who's got this one? Justin? Uh, that would be the Merilur Merodine. Merilur Merodine. Let's see if I can grab an example for it in a second. Um, specifically, I guess we would call it like the original color uh, or the color that's been the most popular. It's uh, the 17MR18. It's got a dark green back to it and a silver, uh, silver holographic side. Um, in terms of size, uh, what bait it's mimicking. I think it can mimic, mimic a lot of different things, but a pilchard or scaled sardine is ideally what it's mimicking. And it's neutrally buoyant. It suspends, maybe sinks really, really slow and stays in the strike zone very well. Uh, I think that that shape and that size is what the ticket is because there's a lot of different suspending twitch baits that are out there. Um, some have wings on the back, like, you know, like a sub walk. Some are kind of like long stick baits and they just they twitch and they they dart a little differently. But the way that a Meridine will knock when you're twitching it through the water 
it'll knock forward and then just kind of like give a quick flash. And when it rolls to the side, to the left or to the right, when you twitch it, it's just kind of like a blinking light, um, that hollow foil that's in there. So I think that it's small. Elephants eat peanuts. You know, it's a it's a perfect size bait. Um, and just kind of that that diamond shape uh, or egg shape. I don't really know what kind of shape it is, Luke. You got one on you? Got a sample on no, it? No, I, I hardly ever use those. I don't know. I don't even have one on me. I was looking in here. I, yeah, I don't, I don't have one of those puppies. Yeah, I'm starting to more now when I'm fishing those depths that are like two foot and deeper. And I want to stall over a pothole. And I don't want to bounce bottom if there's pinfish or puffer fish in the area. And I want to stall in like a big sandy pothole. That's been a great go-to. Um, I, I, I just still, I just found one. There you go. This this is a, this is the the top the dark top. So the olive top is probably the best. But um, again, they'll 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 work. And I I again just like always I replace the trebles with those with those lines. Nice, cool. A weighted weedless hook. This is probably no other shocker. Uh, the owner twist lock. We've been fishing this forever. No, we're not sponsored by owner. We send them a lot of money ourselves. It's not the other way around. Uh, we spend a ton of money ourselves with owner because we just, we can't find anything to beat this thing yet. Uh, we've tried. We'd love to because they're not cheap. Uh, but man, they just flat out work and they last a long time. So it's still the ultimate value. Super easy to rig. They have some patent. I don't know exactly what it is, but some patent on that little, you know, twist lock and uh, on the pin essentially. And they just, they flat out work. I think if you guys could recommend one, what did we, 3.0 and a 1.8 ounce? Yeah, 3.0, the 1.8. It's a relatively new one. The original ones was a 3 odd with a 1.16 ounce weight. But the uh, the 1.8, it just helps a little bit of uh, distance for casting, right? It's slight, but it is noticeable. And and it's almost the same running depth. Like the running depth is pretty much the same. And and so here's how it looks on, like this is a Slam Shady rigged on it. Deadly. So it's a nice streamlined bait. You can you can just skin hook the tip, and now you're super weedless. You can skip under mangroves with this. You can get really tight to structure, and uh, without getting snagged. And this is this is this was the biggest game changer in my saltwater fishing. Um, is going to a weighted hook from the traditional. I don't have one here with me. The traditional, you know, kind of like worm hooks. Because um, you, yeah, like it's it's very helpful to have the keel that keeps the bait from spinning. It is. It was a, an absolute game changer. So if you have are not yet using weighted hooks, highly, highly recommend getting. We forgot to mention cons in the past couple. The con of this, the only con is really this. It's expensive. It's a little bit more expensive than most others. And really, the only cons of those those soft plastics that we mentioned is just the fact that they they can get torn up by puffers, or they will get torn up by puffers. Puffers just eat through everything. Yeah. And um. And so just know that they're you know they're they're something that you definitely do not use when puffer fish are really bad because you'll go through a ton of them. And that's sure. the importance of having the hard baits as well. So like the initial con to point out with the owner twist lock, and I've been um, stubborn, I guess, they don't work as well on a, you know, Z-Man or a Last Tech or TPE type of plastic, like the super, super stretchy, durable plastics. I've forced this puppy on. And just because I want to try and experiment and play with all these different things, um, but it's so much easier using a jig head or using what we're going to go on to talking about one of the next hooks uh, with these super stretchy plastic. So owner twist locks work really well with uh, with a traditional plastic. They work awesome with bombers, you know, the Alabama leprechaun, uh, the Slim Shady 2.0. They're just a versatile rig, but um, not the go to, at least when using Z-Man type of plastics. Yep. So let's talk about that. The jig head, if we only have one jig head and this is, I bought a, I think I got like a 50 pack myself of this exact same jig head. Um, Z man, the trout eye and the one fourth ounce and glow. If we could only pick one color, if you're just going to go with one, obviously sometimes they're out of it and we'll get chartreuse or pearl, or they even have, I don't use red as much. Um, but glow, if we could only pick one and they had it in stock, is that Z-Man, Trout Eye, Quarter Ounce, and Glow. The thing, it just, it works. The con is, it's they're not cheap. Uh, you're talking, you know, over a dollar a pop now for these chick heads. But then again, you know, it, assuming you don't get broke off and you have nice mono leader, um, and you could catch hundreds of fish on one jig head. I mean, sometimes they'll last for ages. And, um, and they don't seem to rust out. I mean, everything will over time, but they seem to last a really long time. And as long as you wash them off after every use, 
Uh, I love the Z Ninja heads. Love them. Anything else? We need to move on. Um, yeah, let's move on. I think I covered yeah, that. Just one thing on the color. So the color doesn't really matter. I just use I just use the color to help me understand the the size. So I use glow for quarter, pearl for three sixteenths, and like yellow for the one eighth. But I've tried them all. Like I can't tell it. I don't think the fish care. No. Um, so use that really for yourself. Trying to get whatever's in stock. Otherwise, yeah. I had a I had a fish send me an instant messenger on a facebook and said he didn't like the color jig that i was using so on to the wheatless jig head z-man wins again here what do we got justin actually really enjoyed using these um this is the texas eye uh the size we recommend overall like you know do everything is the three sixteenths and we carry it in the pearl color again colors negligible but the texas eye is super universal um I've spent a lot of time rigging it. I'm going to have another video talking about different applications for using the Texas side. Uh, but essentially, it is a weedless rig because you're taking an extra wide gap hook. So I can get that up in here. You're taking an extra wide gap hook. You have a little bit of a weighted hook keeper, and we'll explain that in a second. And then you kind of have this free-floating, oscillating weighted head up front. Uh, I believe this is the quarter ounce glow, but the 3 16th pearl it's just kind of the, the best to do everything. You can work it shallow. You can work in a little bit deeper water past two foot. Um, and the, the best thing about it is you can work it over all different types of structure. So you can slow roll a paddle tail. I've actually really enjoyed using it with uh, the four inch and five inch paddler Z's um, just in, in slang shady color. Uh, you can work it on a four inch diesel minnow. Uh, these I found, if we're going to talk about pros and cons, have worked best with the Z-Man material or a TPE plastic. Um, you can use them on a uh, Slam Shady Bomber. I would prefer to use them on a little bit longer paddle tails, four inches and bigger, um, because that hook shank does go a little bit further back. But, um, and using it on regular plastic, like, it just that, that hook keeper, that weighted tab that's great at holding the stretchy Z-Man material on will end up tearing apart a traditional plastic. Um, so it's not gonna last as long. But it's great for these type of lures. And I really enjoyed it. I actually got a really nice like 27, 28 inch redfish throwing a throwing a Texas eye on a natural colored plastic recently. Um, and just super happy with how it performs. You can bounce over oysters and rocks and grass. And uh, I think I think it's a good thing to have for somebody just getting started and they just want to cover a lot of water and don't know what kind of structure they're gonna get in, they're gonna get into. Um, I would go with this for sure. And surprisingly good for trolling as well. It keeps, you know, if you're in a grassy area, it'll, it'll help not get snagged. Um, con, biggest con I've seen is that it's not very good for skipping. So like skipping docks, the fact that this, the jig head can move around, it almost always will, will seem to be in a position where it, it prevents the lure from skipping. Whereas a normal jig head will always pretty much sit flat and, uh, and it'll skip much better. So for dock fishing, I like the normal weedless jig heads, but for overall, uh, like here would be here would be like a normal one that has that little that little uh, weed guard that little metal weed, weed guard skips way better but overall if you're only gonna get one this would still be it amen i caught, I caught one of my biggest snook on artificial uh last year with this jig head with the slam shade 2.0 dock fishing so it's still possible nice all right spoon moving on to spoons the old johnson silver minnow quarter ounce and we're talking gold baby gold this thing has been working since my granddad was a kid, right? I mean, this is what our dad taught us to go out there and and, and catch inshore fish with. Uh, I remember sitting in oyster bars in Marco Island, just casting my old gold spoon. And uh, we, we go back and forth gold and silver. But I think overall, most of us from Texas to Virginia would say, you know, if you could only pick one, it, it'd be a gold one. And uh, that thing just, it keeps producing. It's so simple, uh, yet it just keeps on working. Yeah, in a taco store, you would think that this wouldn't catch anything, right? It doesn't look right. nearly as as uh, as in enticing as like those lures now, like live target lures that have like the actual scales like painted on and and everything. But this thing is it'll absolutely catch fish. I think I think the funniest part is that like this, you could say the spoon doesn't look like anything, but then again, nothing else in the fishing world looks like a spoon, and yet the spoon works. When nothing else does, so it is a it's a necessary item to have in the tackle box. Just as absolutely, 
And for me, it's when it's when puffers are chewing on my soft plastics, I go to the wheelie spin. That's that's like my my one two. Let's use it when I'm using those things. But I always have some with me. Yep. Cool. Next one, bucktail. Another kind of a must have item in in any saltwater angler's tackle box. This is what Luke and I very first time we went snook fishing, you know, the, we were, there was some, a little bit more experienced anglers. We were young. I was probably 12. Luke was 10 ish. And guess what they gave us an old white Millie's bucktail. And uh, we were just bouncing that sucker off the bottom near a, near a, a pass and caught some monster snook. And so Millie's is no longer around. Um, there's a lot of you Floridians who used to use that. No, but what do we pick here? What was the winner for the bucktail? Spro, spro to quarter ounce and just pearl white, just straight white. That's it's just tried and true. Um, white is a smart color. If you don't have one, that's that's it. It basically mimics the color of the water. So whether the water's dark, it'll appear dark. If the water's clear, it'll it'll appear just white and natural. It's uh it's tried and true. It's good. All right, circle hook for bait size two to four inches. This always reminds me of Mugatu from Zoolander every time I see the name. What did you do, Derek? Nothing. <laughs> you did nothing. I invented the piano key necktie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So who who won this best circle hook for the smaller I, uh, baits? I will tackle this one. I don't have the exact size in front of me, but the go-to, you're going to have one circle hook. So I don't have it in my tackle box right now. Is uh, is an owner Mutu light? <laughs> you got to. You got to said it. We got to. light. Did you, did you notice he's only turning right? He can't. He's not turning yeah, left. He's not an ambi turner. <laughs> I can't turn left. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Derek. I'm sure there's plenty of people oh. that can't turn left. Boom. There it's probably a little harder to see with the light. Owner Mutu light. Circle hook. Uh, this is the two odd size. Great for shrimp. Great for pilchards. Great for pinfish under four inches or so. Uh, this is. I mean, I've had this in my box for, for ten years. This has kind of been the go-to. There's a lot of different circle hooks out there. This Nautilus style just tends to be the best, especially when using live shrimp. Um, if you just want to go out and soak some shrimp, this would be the uh, initial go-to. And again, shrimp that's a little bit bigger go a little bit bigger size, but a lot of your smaller size shrimp four inches and under. Two odd is great. You can drop down to a one odd if they're really small. But this has been kind of like the the best all around size, I would say. Yep, owner just makes great hooks. Obey my dog. All right, let's go to circle hook for the bigger baits. We're talking yeah. five inches or, or larger. What are you guys using? Yeah, it's it's all the same one. And it's just key to match the size of the hook to your to your bait that you're using. That's really the overall key. And it doesn't have you don't have to have like every single, you know. Two odd, like three odd, two odd, one odd, size one, two. So five inches at the five odd there, Dustin. Yeah. 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 This is the, the five odd. A little bit, a little bit thicker wire, a little bit bigger gap. Um, just five odd ended up being the size for cut baits for for bigger live croakers, bigger pinfish. Um, I mean, some of these sizes go all the way up to like an eight odd, nine odd, and just monstrous, but five odd gets it done. Cool. All right, now we're uh, moving into kind of some more accessories, which are still incredibly important. Sunglasses. We went back and forth on this one. As you guys know, I have a little bit of a problem buying sunglasses. I, I have well over 20 something pairs of like nice polarized glasses. And I've had everything from Costa, Maui's, Ray-Bans, Hobie's, Salt Life, Smith's, Oakley's. Uh, you name it. And, you know, we boiled our our store. If you guys know Fish Strong Com, you can get all this stuff, by the way, at a, especially if you remember to discount. You know, we try to to be the opposite of what the big boxes do is just have a bunch of everything. Half the stuff is not the best and it's not the best value. And some of it's not even good. And you just don't flat out need it. So we only want to provide the best. And so we went with Smith and Oakley and truly believe those are the two best in terms of just overall value in terms of the type of like with Oakley, the, I mean, that, that prism uh, technology that they have and their polarized glasses and, and even the warranty and stuff, you know, Costa's really dropped the ball in my opinion. I don't want to slam them too hard, but they've, they were way up here and I used to only buy them and they've just gone down and down. Once again, we're not sponsored by any of these groups, just personal. And that's not just me. It's a large group of anglers 
the only people I see that really push them hard are people who are sponsored by them. Um, so we ended up deciding after all it was said and done, if we could only pick one, it would be the Smith Guides Choice. Those things are awesome. They got the Chroma Pop Plus. I don't even know what all the Chroma Pop stuff means. And after that, it's more of a question, you know, do you want to go glass or do you want to go poly? Uh, what's the top selling mirror color? I, I know, you know, always that always comes up. Uh, bronze is probably the the best overall for inshore fishing, if you had to pick one. As far as the land shade, yeah, bronze for inshore is generally the the thing. And then for offshore, it's like the gray. The gray seems to be the the choice. Um, and But I've tried a lot of them. Even like some with like the green mirror, like green mirror with the bronze um, color, and that's that's supposedly the best range for fishing. I, I mean, I have some with the mirror, some without. I really can't tell a difference, to be honest. A lot of it comes down to just how the frames fit your face, and so the goal for any whatever lies you go with is to make sure to block as much of that sun as possible from coming in through the sides. Yep. Um, so that's key. So ideally, have some with like a thicker like a, a wider um, side, right? Not those like um, aviator glasses. Like you don't want those because that sun is going to come in through the side and through the bottom. Um, so you just want to minimize all of the side penetrating light so that all of your focus is straight forward. It makes a big difference doing that. It's huge. Um, yeah, your aviators might look cool with that little thin gold uh, arm, but it it's horrible in turn. Like you can tell a massive difference. And then if you get a hoodie, we didn't, I don't, I don't think we went that far. Did we? Yeah. We didn't go into to close apparel, but then you get a hoodie to cover that up as well. Like it's game changing what you can see. Yep. Cool. All right. Smith optics, uh, pliers. We even go into pliers and we got scissors and some other tackle management stuff. And then we'll, then we'll be, wrap the sucker up. So pliers, uh, what size are you going with? I have a good example. Um, a seven, man, I feel like a magician. Like, what do I have to pull out of my hat? Oh, Emmy. Just a pair of seven and a half inch aluminum pliers. But the key, I think, is having a side cutter here on the side. Just makes it really, really convenient. And this is a value item. You can find aluminum side cutter pliers for 25, 30 bucks if you look for yeah, it. Dan, um, Danco makes great ones. Yeah, Danco. I think these are Danco's, actually. Um I've had these for a year and a half, two years, and they've just sat in pools of salt water in the back of my kayak for a while. And I've never needed to change out these uh, these carbide cutters. Sometimes you do, but they're a pretty easy accessory. You can get at a big box store for a couple bucks or get them at Danco online. Um, essential. I mean, there, there's a lot of different pliers. You know, a lot of people will start out just taking a pair of needle nose out of the toolbox and go and using that. And that's fine but the joint connection on those needle nose will rust out and you got to use wd-40 and you got to stretch it out i've not needed to use wd-40 on these and i'm fishing offshore sometimes and just taking heavy waves and spray and just having these sit in water that's draining out of a boat um and they're solid i really don't need to put a lot of pressure on them so good value item to have and you'll save so much time when you're tying your knots and cutting up braid to have those little sharp cutters on there versus like the old deal nose, you're sitting there uh, gripping it and ripping it. And it's just, Oh, I, it, the, braid, we used to use our teeth. Yes. <laughs> that was not fun cutting 30 pounds. Now your dentist would definitely highly recommend not doing that on your teeth. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. So I want to say Dan, I don't think we put a, a a brand on that one because we all had kind of different ones. But in general, that's what I'm using. Uh, just great value company. Uh, scissors or split ring tool or one that does both. Oh, whammy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are the Salt Strong Scissors, one of our top selling items in the store. Yeah, so speaking of saving time when you're rigging, this is it. So this has been a total. Now, I, I actually rarely, I very rarely use my pliers to cut mine. Like if I'm tying, because I have like 10 of these. I have them everywhere. They're they're not expensive at all, right? Compared to pliers, they're shockingly good at, at corrosion resistance. I literally keep some in the boat in a cup holder that's getting rained on all the time. I never rinse it off and they're still kicking. It has, it cuts braid of all sizes extremely yep. well, mono of all sizes. And then it has the split ring with a very sharp tip so that even those little small like mirrodines, when I'm switching out those little mirrodines, getting those troubles off, putting the inlines in, it even does that easily as well. So like this is, I would say, a must-have for fishermen. And actually, not just one, I have a bunch. I have multiple in the boat. 
have multiple in my tackle box. I have some in my truck. Um, there, it's like this has been my favorite tool of all. Yeah, right here for sure. Cool. All That's right, let's move it. on to tackle management. Tackle tray, tackle box. Mm. That's it. I mean, super 100%. simple. Hundred percent. Uh, thirty six hundred size, Plano waterproof stowaway. I think these have the pre molded slots in them. There's some that have the slots that you can organize yourself. Luke's got his way of organizing. Looks like you, Luke, have your set up for different hooks and jig yeah. heads because that's the key. To you, depending on where you're fishing, that's your organization. Yeah. So they come with the you can manage. You can have it open where you have long lures in there, or you can have your little sec little small sections for different hooks. Um, the key though is to have the the rubber seal, so the waterproof. Everyone saltwater fishing, even if it's in your tackle box, even if you're fishing from a boat, especially from a kayak. No matter what you do, even storing in the garage near saltwater environments, salt wa salt will get in these compartments if they're not sealed. So super super important. Get the seal kind. It'll save you a ton of money and and, and headache. Even fishing with I was fishing with a member down in Marco. Last week, and he has a place at Marco that's on the Gulf Coast. It's like two miles from the Gulf, and that's the Gulf. Now it's even worse than Atlantic. And if he leaves stuff in his closet or in his garage for a, for a period of time, it gets rusted. You know, so it's super crucial to get that waterproof. Yep. And the the Plano Edge, that's the new one you've seen us use, and we're testing that out as well. That might be a better product, but the con is it's it's expensive. And so we want to do for value right now until they get that price down. Uh, but that is a phenomenal tackle tray. Um, I mean, it's instead not, of having the three clips, you got I mean, you can do one hand like it's boom. It's it is pretty smooth. Yeah, it's it's not might be the better product. It is the better product, but it's it's a lot more expensive. So it's let just me use reason. my strong hand. I open this. <laughs> Tackle tray up to get out my jig hand. <laughs> but either way, just make sure it's waterproof. I, I, I've lost so much money on tackle because the rust while while storing. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And then we got to go pop and cork. You know, that's something that we probably don't use as much here at, uh, at Salt Strong. Uh, in general, we definitely use them, but it's not like our go-to. Our I mean, our go-to is, you know, putting slam shade on either one of these jig heads that we talked about or... Uh, an owner twist lock hook. Uh, but if we had to pick one popping cork, what do we got? Uh, what would you got, Luke? The old trusty. Just oh, the old Luke, Luke's going to change, change it up here. Huh? Yeah, just the, this is just the live, but this removable popping cork, right? It's just super convenient, easy. This one happens to be a green bottom. Um, but as far as popping corks, if using like live shrimp, um, and you, if you need a pop and cork and you can, and then you want a free line, right. Then you can just quickly take it off without having to retie anything. It has this little slot in there, has the pin, put the line through there, pin it in there. And now you can, you, you have it. And if you need to go from say the water's three feet deep and then you go a little bit off the flat and now it's four and a half, five. Um, unlike the, the, the setups that we're going to talk next, where it's, it's tied, it's actually tied into the line itself. It's fixed. Um, you can just quickly move it up or down to change depths. So I, I see, highly recommend these. Luke, sections. I want to ask you on those type of bobbers, would you prefer like the pre-weighted ones where the weight is inside of those bobbers? Or do you want the ones that are, don't have a weight and are lightweight? Well, for most cases, in most cases, the weighted is better, because especially if you have like really small shrimp or small bait fish, you actually need the weight of the of the bobber to actually cast it. Um, and when it sits when it sits in the water um, vertically, you need to have at least like four to five inches of mono so that it sticks up and it'll help you not get your line twisted. The ones without the weights, you can't cast as far. Um, and, and sorry, back to the advantage of the weight when it's sitting in the water and you pop it. Now this concave will pop in the water. Now you can make the sound of a fish striking the surface, which gets the attention of fish. When the, when the non-weighted ones rest, they're sitting on the side. It's more likely to do some twisting and it's going to twist your line around, which is obviously never fun. And it doesn't have nearly as good of a popping, uh, sound when you're popping it. So both of them work though. Right. So. Like you're fishing finicky tarpon on the beach and you don't want the sound of a of a weight slap in the water, that's when you go with the one without the weight. Otherwise, I'm always using the weight. 
for so for most inshore fishing, this is it. And there's not even a is there even a brand? I mean, it just you can kind of get this anywhere. They're super cheap, great value. Yeah, like Billy Bay makes some, but there a lot of them are no name brands. Yeah, you should be able to find them at most shops near the water. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's one Very thing we. Back. Yeah, it's one thing we don't have on the on the store just because that's that's one of those things you get at the checkout, and it's just I mean it's super super cheap. Now the other uh, popping core we're going to talk about, right? You, you have one, Justin. I don't have one on me, but okay. I have used it and used a couple different ones. Um, again, best bang for buck being the focus here because there are some custom popping corks that cost an arm and a leg yeah. that guys swear by. And then there's some less expensive ones for people just getting started. I think best value popping cork is the Bomber Paradise Popper. Um, I've used, you know, Horsemen. I've used Cajun Thunders. And the, the Bomber Paradise Popper has been kind of the best go-to. Uh, in terms of the sound that it makes. And I really think the biggest thing is the reinforcement of that stock wire that runs through that popping cork. Um, I've used it in Venice, Louisiana, fishing for big bulls, and it, it makes a ton of noise. And it's solid because sometimes the bulls will come up and hit the popping cork. And on inferior ones, the wires will bend and then it doesn't sound the same when you try to bring it back into place. Uh, but the material used on those Paradise Poppers by Bomber are, are pretty solid. Um, so I think that's that's a that's a good value. Sweet. Well, this is hopefully helpful. There's there is one more thing that is part of the index, and uh, we surveyed a, a large group of people, twenty three thousand inshore anglers, and the question was, what is the best fishing club in America? And twenty three thousand people said the Salt Strong Insider Club. Yeah, hippie hooray! See you later. Uh, yeah. So, guys, if you don't know about the club. I, that means shame on us. We've done a horrible job after all the thousands of blog posts and videos that we've done over the the six years we've been in business. But it's really the foundation of the company. It's 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 our family. It's where we put all of our best stuff. So you know these podcasts, a lot of the things you see on YouTube. Obviously, it's it's public. It's good. It's 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 very helpful. It's a great starting point, but we preserve the very best stuff, which is all the trends and all our fishing reports and all the spots and everything else that we're doing, including now discounts and a private community for our insider members. We actually have more content just for our members that does not exist out on YouTube. It's the stuff you can't find anywhere else. And there's really just two big goals for all of our members. And this is really what the, we have 100% money back guarantee for an entire year, which is unheard of. I mean, you can actually get all your money back, no questions asked, even at day 364 and you know 59 minutes. And number one goal is to save time, right? And it's the number one probably issue that most of us have as anglers is time. We don't have enough time to go fishing. We all wish we could fish more or lives get in the way, spouses, jobs, kids, dogs, whatever it is. And we all just wish we could fish more. And so for those of us who value our time and want to maximize it and want to be at the right spot at the right time, this club is for you. That's that's the center of it. That's how it all got started, which was putting people in the 90-10 zone. You know, the 90-10 zone is 90% of feeding fish are in 10% of any area at any given time. We want you in the feeding zone. That's the goal. And then number two is money, which money is time. But I'm talking about real dinero here. Uh, not just something that moves around on a clock. So how we save you money is on the tackle side of things. Obviously, you've you've heard a few of these items on here are our own. I wish we had the Mugatu hook, uh, but of course, that's for owner. But a lot of these are our own products that we're now coming up with with private manufacturers to give you the absolute best. And of course, you get up to 20% off every single thing in our store. We have some members now in just the past 12 months, we have you know some members going on their fifth year, but some members in just the last 12 months have spent five, six, seven thousand dollars in our store on tackle, which is pretty impressive and awesome. Uh, I wish I had that much money to spend on tackle this year. Mine's a little bit less. Uh, but I, Luke and I use this. Justin uses this. We're all using our membership to save money on the tackle. It's like getting pro staff deal times two. Uh, and you don't have to live in your mom's basement and say you're a pro staffer on, uh, on Facebook. So it is all about saving time and saving money. And the third part, which was kind of unique, and we didn't really we didn't really know about this. We certainly didn't promote it because it was just very organic. Once, once we created the private club, so we have a, a private community 
that exist online where people are putting their own fishing reports and sharing what's working in their area. It's the friendships. We're having meetups. I mean, we, like Luke just mentioned, we were in Marco Island last week. We're in Vero the week before for a pig roast. And now all of our members in Texas, you know, in Florida, in the Carolinas, in Virginia, and obviously everywhere in between, they're now getting together and meeting. Uh, some are having just meetups with two people and going out kayak fishing or beach fishing. Some are meeting up 30, 40 people and, you know, having beers afterwards and just kind of sharing stories and just, you know, finding finding people that you like and have something in common with. And that's that's really, really cool. So that was a, a third value add of this uh, this club. And that's honestly what, what keeps a lot of us coming back. And, and now, you know, we used to use Facebook a lot. We had a Facebook group. Uh, we we actually turned the insider group off. There's still the public one out there for just all kinds of madness. Uh, but we now as a team, you know, we have 16 team members and fishing coaches just to help you out. We're spending all of our time now in this insider community, in the private insider community. We have to have your own username and password to log in, which you can get right now today by joining us in the club. Like I said, 23,000 members have said yes to this. And, uh, and it seems like everyone, for the most part, keeps renewing year after year because it works. Now, you you do have to do a little bit of work. There's no one that's just going to give you a magic red pill and tomorrow you're just going to be a, a slayer. Uh, you have to do a little bit of work, but we have simplified a big time because we're like you. We have jobs. We have stuff going on. We have families. Uh, we try to do it. If you just have 10 minutes or less, like that's that's kind of the guarantee, 10 minutes or less per week you will see that you're catching more fish. And, and we say 10 minutes because we have a 10 minute kind of a, we call it a smart fishing game plan. It's it's a fishing report done by Luke. And now we're getting other pros in different areas to do it as well. Where if you just watch that 10 minute video, you will know exactly where to go fishing every week and all year long to catch inshore slams faster than you ever imagined. So come join us in the club. It's just 27 cents per day. That's less than a cup of coffee per day. That's, uh, I mean, it, that's crazy how in, inexpensive and affordable it is. And uh, you'll see just why so many people join us. We're now doing live calls uh, as well. If you ever want to get on kind of like a live coaching call with all of us, uh, absolute blast. We're doing that as well. Just trying to make it a no-brainer for people, one, to join us, and for two, for people to keep renewing year after year because we're having so much fun doing it and meeting a lot of friends ourselves. Guys, anything to add to that besides join today? Yeah, I mean, it's, if you like if you like inshore fishing, you know, redfish, sea trout, snook flounder, and, and you want to just catch them more consistently throughout the year, then this is it. There's nothing else that is, that's even close. And that's why we offer such a big guarantee. We literally guarantee the entire duration of your membership so that if you're not catching more fish than ever before and you're not saving money to actually pay for the subscription, like for the membership, then just let us know. And we'll give you the money back. It's uh, it, The risk is totally on our shoulders. We know it works. We know it's going to help you. We know it's going to help you even teach your your kids, grandkids on how to fish better as well. This will be a legacy thing. And so uh, we just ask, just give it a try. Let us uh, let us prove that it works. We know it will. And so we just want to make it as easy as possible for you to do it. Join today. You'll get a welcome email. All you have to do is click the welcome link. You don't need to be a computer programmer. You'll click the link. You'll automatically be logged in. And then you can start accessing the private content straight from there. Yep. All at saltstrong.com com in a cool little my little daughter came in uh <laughs> speaking of family you know that's what we're all about here family first um but uh speaking of all this we will keep the show notes including a link to every single piece of tackle we talked about there at saltstrom.com and i would encourage you especially if you're new or new to artificial lures or just new to inshore fishing we get a lot of a lot of bass anglers that come over and they they really want to learn inshore fishing Buy one of every one of these things. I mean, and maybe a couple of of, of some of them uh, that you need. I mean, that's this is what you need. We're trying to simplify it. You don't need to go to Bass Pro and spend five thousand bucks on all kinds of random stuff. We want to keep it super simple and affordable, and just tell you the best value. And this is Consumer Reports right here of inshore saltwater fishing. And if you like this. Let us know. Put a put a comment in the comment section, and let us know if you want to do it. Us to do it for you know surf fishing, pier fishing, beach fishing, you, you name it. Because uh, it can get. I mean, just like S and P five hundred sort of one index. I think they have like fifteen indexes. Maybe it might be fifty now. Uh, but at one point they had like fifteen different ones, like utility index, and they can get really really niched out. So uh, we love this stuff. It's fun for us to go test stuff. We love going out and spending our own hard money on it and reporting back to you what works. So that is it. I know we went a little bit long on this one, but it's a very important one, and especially if you are new or you need tackle and you're confused. Just go down that list and just start clicking each link. 
and buying one of what we say, it, it, it will work. And then the coolest part is we will continually update it. Uh, so this will be something we're probably going back to. I'm guessing every quarter, not every week, but every quarter we'll go back and maybe you know change change one thing, maybe not. Uh, but that'll all be based on real on the water experience. What it's all about. So guys, come join us at saltstore.com. You existing members, thank you so much for all the support, all the love. We can't do it without you and we'll see you in the community. Otherwise, check us out at saltstrong.com. Peace. See ya. Cause fishing.